resources, inspiring interviews, business practices, and practical advice to take your art career to the next level. Join Sergio Gomez in today's Artist Next Level and get ready to take control of your career. Well, hello, my Next Level friend. Welcome to a brand new episode of the Artist Next Level podcast. This is a special edition episode in which I am interviewing artists from around the world as they are stuck at home during the coronavirus lockdown. Have you heard of the Artist Support Pledge? I'm sure you have. And well, I have a surprise for you, my friends. Today, we're talking to Matthew Burroughs all the way from the United Kingdom, and he is the brains behind the Artist Support Pledge. Lynch. Well, Matthew, welcome to the program. How are you today? I'm very good. Thank you, Sergio. It's great to be, be on with you today to answer questions on this and talk a little bit about uh, our support pledge. Absolutely. You know, we are uh, really happy to have you here because I first heard of the Artist Support Pledge through a friend who had posted it on his, on his Instagram. And I was really curious about it. So, you know, I started clicking around, of course, got to the, to the page. Uh, on Instagram for the support pledge, found out yeah. how it worked. And then to my great surprise, I've seen artists that I know, good friends of mine who have been using it. Uh, mm -hmm. And also I've interviewed artists in the show that have mentioned and how they are using also the artist support pledge or being part of, I should say, being part of the artist support pledge. So I got really interested and I said, I really had to find whose idea was this. And that's how I find you, Matthew, and uh, super excited to... Uh, have you here because I think this is something that more than any time you know is helping artists connect right from around yeah. the world and support each other the first uh, thing I want to pretty much uh, chat with you about is uh, if you can tell us what in the world is the artist support pledge for those of our friends who do not know what that is well I think of it as both a kind of culture a generous culture and a kind of gifted economy that's the way I describe it so mm -hmm. I, I you know I sort of had to when I came up with the idea for this sort of economic model, I sort of thought it needed a culture to go with it. So I came up with this idea that it needed to operate within a, a culture of generosity, mm -hmm. which I'd always, I'd been playing around with that idea for a very long time with other, other projects. So it's not, wasn't a new thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and then really coming up with the, the, the sort of uh, the formula for how it works was based mm -hmm. on that was just about sort of thinking about, um, what it means to enter into something in a gifted way, in a generous way, and then to exit in a gifted and generous way, and then to recycle that. So it had to be on a sort of cyclical, cyclical um, kind of model. Um, and also it had to be quick because the, the problem that a lot of artists were facing was right. immediate. So it had to generate a very rapid economy. Um, and it sounds very simple now I say it <laughs> and it's now I look at it and think, well, of course, you know, of course it did that, but uh, that wasn't what I expected when I came up with the idea. It, it didn't, uh, it didn't strike me as a winner straight away. I just thought it was a relatively good idea. So can, um, can you explain what, how it works? Yeah. So what you do is you, uh, you put your work on Instagram mm -hmm. for sale with the hashtag artist support pledge mm -hmm. and you put a, picture of your work with a description of the work and the price. And it can't be for more than 200 pounds. It can be for less than 200 pounds or $200. Mm -hmm. um, it can be less than that, but it can't be more than that. So straight away, it's a very quick turnaround economically because most people can have access to buying work at that level. Mm -hmm. And then once you reach $1,000 of sales, you pledge to spend $200 of your income that you've gained from it on buying another artist's work. Mm -hmm. So anyone can buy the, your work, anyone can buy any of the work. Right. But part of the deal is, is that when you reach $1,000, you spend $200 of that on somebody else's work. So it, it breeds this sort of cycle of generosity. You, right. you post your work generously because it's a fairly low level entry mm -hmm. point price wise. And for not for everybody, but certainly for lots of people, it's well below their market value. So, you know, they're having to lower their, their market price to post work anyway. So it, straight away, there's a sense that people want to buy it. Right. Um, and then at the end of that, rather than just walking away and saying, OK, well, I'm just going to sell as much work as possible, like the market right. normally works. Right. There's that sense that you've then got to kind of gift that on and 
help support somebody else. You can do it as many times as you like, but right. there's that sort of sense of supporting your peers is a very compelling idea. Yeah. Um, and create, making the artist into patron as mm -hmm. well is, is uh, very empowering, I think, for artists. And what I love that is that the idea is very easy to understand. It's not complicated. You know, you just explained it yeah. to us in less than a minute. You know, it's really easy to understand. So everybody like gets it quickly. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's an easy hashtag to use, artist support pledge. And then it's up, you know, as the sales happen, you know, it, it counts on the generosity of the artist to follow through as well That's on right. the pledge. Yeah. So you don't have to sign up to a website or sign up to a something that, That's you it. know, then remember, I know the password, <laughs> you know, all these things that sometimes, you know, are intermediaries between That's the right. action and the result. But this is totally on the generosity of the artists themselves. And uh, I think that is fabulous. Uh, Matthew, how has been the response so far? I know the Instagram page has already over 11,000 followers, you know, at least when I checked right before the interview, but uh, what has been the response, the messages that you're getting from artists or, or maybe oh, some of the stories that you're hearing? hearing? Um, staggering. I mean, I, within, I think, 24 hours of my first post, which was literally done um, sitting watching television at night, and I just put a post on with the, the uh, explanation of what it was, thought nothing of it, and within 24 hours, I was getting two messages a second from around the world my literally my phone was constantly on message mm -hmm. um, and that went on like that for days uh, and I was trying to answer these messages which I obviously couldn't <laughs> get to all of them um, but I was trying to sort of best I could to sort of um, support that wave of goodwill and, and um, gratitude really you know a lot of people yeah. were sort of you know at that point it was sort of you know I put work on I've sold one yeah. So that sense that somebody had sold something suddenly gave them a sort of, they felt empowered by that idea that they could make some money right. and they could make it today, not next month, exactly. not in three months time. Right. You know, you know, it's like being an artist, you know, cash flow is always complicated because you exactly. get paid in bits. And so to be able to generate an income straight away was extremely exciting. And then mm -hmm. I think, by about the third or fourth day, I was then getting messages from people saying, I've now made my first pledge. So I've That's actually amazing. bought somebody else's work. And then it dawned on me that actually this was, this was generating a significant amount of money. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, obviously not everywhere because by the end of the first week, it was literally global. It was in virtually every continent. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm, I'm guessing, although I don't know, I'm guessing that in some parts of the world, it's going to be harder for people to... Right. Um, generate money as maybe than it is in in America or in uh, in England. Right. Um, but I think the knock on effect of that's really interesting. So, mm -hmm. you know, artists by nature are very um, exploratory in what they will want to buy. So they're looking around. So they're looking at things to buy. They're supporting their friends and their colleagues, but they're also looking further afield. Okay. So in a way, what was I think that I sort of unwittingly I, I didn't realize I'd sort of done was I created an economy, mm -hmm. an economic model that reflected the way artists behave. Right. So it, it fit very easily into the way artists think, the way artists naturally want to, you know, they're, they're, I always sort of think of it as artists being a kind of gifted people. And I don't mean that in the sense that they have talent, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but I mean in, that, in the sense that what they do is they make things that are a gift to the world. Mm -hmm. So when you put art into the world, whether you sold it or whether you just shown it to somebody, that's a creative act that has given something to the world. So it's a gifted act. Mm -hmm. So there, I think artists are very used to that idea. They're used to how it feels right. to give something. Right. And I think all I actually did was then gave them an economic model, that allowed them to make money and sustain themselves, but also allowed them to enact that gifted quality mm -hmm. that they all have so it, it might not have worked in another industry i doubt it would um right. but it, it just fit very neatly into the way artists think and behave can you tell us a little bit about you know your work as an artist uh and you know maybe how this has led to these you know um, yeah um well largely I, I make paintings but i also make sculptures as well but i've been for a long time trying to find a way of um thinking about how to connect with things like your, the environment, so the ecosystems, and also a kind of connectedness to both the self and to 
mm-hmm. um, sort of the community. And I don't mean that in terms of doing community work as an artist, but I mean in the sense that can can one make can you make work as an artist that is about connectivity? That is mm-hmm. that the DNA of the work is about connecting to both the ground at your feet, what the earth you stand on, mm-hmm. the sky above your head. And also to your friends, family, neighbours, and the people on the other side of the world. And in a way, that idea that the earth I'm standing on mm-hmm. is the same earth that you're standing on, but you have a very particular, unique set of experiences because of the culture and the environment and the networks that you're involved right. in. So that I, I love that idea that the, there's this sort of generosity of spirit that spreads right across the whole planet because we're all interconnected but also we also bring to that a uniqueness a a specificity that is really exciting and i think didn't think too often in in kind of contemporary culture we sort of split them into one or the other Mm. we think either it's about localism or it's about globalism right and what we don't do is see well say well what's the relationship so i've been sort of working on that in my work as a painter for a long time Hmm. But the, the, the kind of culture of trust and generosity actually comes from um, a project which I set up about 12 years ago now, hmm. uh, which is called ABC Projects Atelier. And it's basically a kind of peer mentoring program. So it's, okay. it's for um, established sort of mid-career artists who've already done their formal training. So they've already done the MFAs and um, you know, they've already been to their university, through school and university okay. training. And they're out in the world making work and they perhaps need a bit more support, some uh, Mm -hmm. more kind of structure to their thinking. So it's, it's small groups of of four people. We meet six times a year, um, Mm -hmm. two days at a time. And it works within a culture. And this culture I I've sort of developed over the years of trust and generosity, because I Mm -hmm. feel that if you cannot trust one another implicitly Mm -hmm. and you're not, not only generous in spirit to one another, but generous in receiving Mm -hmm. Uh, critique and dialogue then honest debate about work is impossible Mm. because then you end up just saying what you think other people want to hear or saying what somebody else might say but if you really want to say what you really think or what your fears really are your hopes really are or your uh, even what you don't know you know being having that sense of freedom to sort of really say where you're stuck and where you feel that you're lacking knowledge or skills whatever is tremendously uh, tremendously empowering for artists so i developed this culture of doing this of trust and generosity which i always Mm. instill in it i always introduce right at the beginning every time we we do it and so when when this idea when i started trying to come up with this idea for the hashtag campaign that's literally what i did i sat down and and i literally wrote on a piece of paper I thought, okay, what are my assets as an artist yeah. I can use to help? What right. are the things I can use right now? Because this had to be quick. I wrote two things down, and that was artwork and this culture of trust and generosity. Right. So that was the two, they were the two things I knew I had to work with. Mm-hmm. But then it was just a matter of coming up with a, a way of, a sort of formula, if you like, mm-hmm. to make that work. And initially, I, I thought, okay, Sell the work, sell the work quite cheap. So I came up with the two hundred pound or the two hundred dollar mark quite quickly because mm-hmm. I thought that's cheap enough, right, for, to be under normal market value. So it's not mm-hmm. going to threaten galleries, right? Because right. galleries won't touch work at that level. Mm-hmm. So it's not undermining the normal commercial sector that I, I work in as well as an mm-hmm. artist. Um, and it's it's also tapping into work that everyone has in their studio. Most people have stuff lying around in their studio, right. They can sell for that range of money that would never make it into a gallery because it's just too low in value. Right. So, you know, there's a, there's a product is out there. The stuff is all, all over the world in people's studios. Mm-hmm. And all I did really was then realize that if I made it 200 pounds and then the formula was to you know, donate, in effect, you're acting generously and posting generously and then generously giving something else onto somebody else. And the 200 pounds then became sort of 20%. So I thought, okay, 20% you give back. So when you reach a thousand dollars, you get, so it makes the numbers very easy. It's 220. Exactly. There's no complicated <laughs> equations. It's very simple. Um, and so I like that sort of sense that it's cyclical and, and 
no one really can get rich on it. So yes, you can, you can actually earn it. You know, I know a lot of people are actually doing quite well on it, <laughs> Yeah. but there's a limit because how much work can you really sell in a day and how much can you post and how much can you um, produce at that level? So there is a certain, there's, there's an upper limit to the amount of money you can make, but that upper limit is actually more, is, is fairly substantial and it is sustainable. And mm. that's the thing that's been really interesting is that it's created a sort of sustainable ec- economy. Now, how long that will go on for, I don't know, right. but it's created an immediate. Mm-hmm. So within a day of it going on Instagram, it, it was gaining, it was created an economy. Right. Within two days, that economy was, was across the world. Mm. Um, and that economy is more sustainable than most of the economies that, that artists typically work in, which is right. they work in a gallery, selling it to a client, the cuts are taken out from the gallery and from right. the, the framer and from the shipper. And, and by the time you get your cut, it's, you know, it can be months later. <laughs> That's right. This is money straight into the artist's pocket. Right. So it was an immediate economy. And, and also it not only was it good for the artist, but it was good for the collectors because mm-hmm. people who wouldn't typically buy art, but might want to suddenly right. felt empowered to go out and say, okay, well, you know, there's, there's stuff on there for 20 or $30. Mm-hmm. So you can take a risk. You can try right. something out and think, okay, well, if it's, if it's not perfect, it's okay. I can live with it. That's all right. Right. So it's, I think it's just, it's enabled, it's sort of giving people confidence to have a go at it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think a lot of people, unless they are um, a part of the art world, feel a little bit intimidated going into art galleries and buying mm-hmm. art. So right. it's, it's sort of a win-win for everybody, I think. I, uh, absolutely. I love it. And I think for the collector too, not only is work that is accessible, but they also know that they're being part of something bigger because as artists are using the hashtag and then explaining what it is, it's not only here's an artwork that is for 200 pounds or $200, but also I'm part of this global thing or what we're right. doing so you are more compelled to be part of that you know and help out in in your way because you know that uh, 20 percent pretty much of, of that what you're buying will all, all, uh, eventually will help another artist that you don't even know also yeah. make some sales so matthew uh, on behalf of the art community um i want to say thank you so much for your lead on this i think uh, you have done something remarkable uh really uh, in a way that's uh making many artists really as they're going through a hard time, make it a little bit better and uh, providing this model, I think uh, is wonderful. And you are, um, you know, the brains behind it and you, you know, you will never see uh, or meet the, all these thousands of artists from around the world, you know, that uh, are um, being affected by this. So, you know, mm-hmm. on behalf of every invisible artist out there, I want to say thank you for, for your lead on this. That's amazing. Thank you, Sergio. Well, I have to say the pleasure has been mine. To, to be able to serve your 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 community of artists globally is yeah. not is not a thing that any artist ever imagines they're going to do. So exactly, you know, it's been a pleasure. Well, Matthew, we're running out of time. So very quickly, first of all, can you share for our friends who want to see your work as an artist? Uh, what's your Instagram, your artist Instagram page? Um, at Matthew Burrows Studio. Okay. Or and they can go onto my website, which is www.matthewburrows.org. Excellent. Or they can go to my gallery, which is at um, Vigo Gallery or www.vigogallery.com. Excellent. Fabulous. And now for all our friends who really want to get on this artist support pledge right now, who have watched this video and said, I want to be part of it. I want to join. I want to do my part. Where can they go? All you've got to do is post your work with the hashtag artist support pledge and then follow at artist support pledge. Uh, that will give you all of the information. Actually, if you go to at Art Support Pledge first, that tells you what to do, how to do it. And there's lots of uh, each of the posts tells you, has sort of questions and answers and sort of inspiring comments uh, and feedback so that they, all the information is there. Right. So if, if they can't find it there, they don't need to know it. Right. And it's a great place also where you can go and grab some of those images. So if you post your R, you use the hashtag, and then you can do a carousel. And on the second image, use, you know, one of those red posts that you have created, which makes it yeah. so visually. That's uh, right. Yeah. Uh, so either people can repost those images or screenshot them. It's up to them. Yeah. Some people have invented their own. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I don't know why, but they kind of, <laughs> they kind of, they want. Uh, but I mean, that red logo is, all over the world now and right. um, 
I don't know where it's going to go next. We'll see. Absolutely. And well, uh, Matthew, I'm going to join that as well. So as uh, I, you know, talked uh, with you now, I'm going to join the Artist Support Pledge as well and, uh, you know, be part of what you're doing. So thank you so much again for your time. I want to thank to all our friends for watching. Uh, please uh, reach out, uh, you know, make sure you use the Artist Support Pledge hashtag when you do it. And thank you for watching. Please share this episode with a friend. I know you guys have been so awesome in sharing the episodes. This one is super important, particularly for all your artist friends, so that we can all help support each other as we go through this crisis. Thank you, Matthew. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, thank you. And pleasure. We'll see you guys in the next episode. Have a great day. Goodbye. Check out our website at www.theartistnextlevel.com where you will find our podcast library, learn about our upcoming webinars, find resources relevant to your career, and much more. Thanks for listening to today's podcast, and we'll see you at the next level.